This conference will now be recorded. Psalms 8, Stacy, please, everybody. Psalms 8. Where's Diane? No Diane tonight? All right. Psalms 8. Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Good evening to all of you. Um, Psalms 8, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to read the entire thing. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praises of your children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foes and the avengers. When I consider your heavens, the works of your finger, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? of them being human beings being that you care for them you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor you made them rulers over the works of your hands you put everything under their feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea all that swim the path of the sea Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Amen to the word of God. Let's bow our heads. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for your love and for your kindness to being such an awesome God. We come praising you and giving you thanks for all that you do. Lord, I just ask that uh, you look down on our world, Lord, with some compassion, and just, Lord, touch your people's lives because we got so much going on. We pray for those people in Brooklyn, New York, on the subway, lost their lives today. They pray for those families, God. Just ask that you touch. And the one who did the shooting, God, we just ask, Lord, his mind has to be in a different place. We ask you, Lord, be able to help him in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for, for what you're doing. But we know that, Lord, you, you look, you sit high, but you look low. And you, you recognize what's going on. We need your help, God. Help us to live a life that represents you because we never know, God, when we're going to be able to return home. Or not. But Lord, we just ask that you keep us safe, God. Keep us vigilant as we go forward. We just honor you. We just give you praise. Our heart goes out to those families, Sacramento families, Lord. Families in San Francisco, Lord. It seems like all over our country, something's going on. We pray for Ukraine and Russia. We ask that you touch, Holy Spirit, because, Lord, unless you intervene, God, things seem to be going out of control. We just ask that you just touch, God, help and heal. We just give you glory, give you honor for all that you do, because we know you're going to work it out for our good. This is our prayer. Help us tonight as we teach, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. While I'm preparing, uh, I want to... Uh, Michelle, can you get uh, Isaiah chapter two, 12, verse 2? I don't want it right now. Um, Eric, can you get Luke 1, 69? Uh, John, John Timothy Mims, can you get 3, 16 through 18? And Michelle Gibson, did I get you one already? Did I call Michelle's name? Yeah, she gave me Isaiah 12 and 2. Okay. Okay, Cherry, can you get for me First Timothy one fifteen? Isaiah twelve to Luke one sixty nine, John three, sixteen to eighteen, first Timothy one fifteen. I tell you where I don't know. Hmm. Oh there you all right, let's go let's go to uh 
Hebrews chapter. Any questions? Any uh for questions from last week? Lesson? Anybody have any questions? Comments? All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter two, beginning at verse one. Come on, Diane, I need you to read for me. We're gonna read it through and we're gonna come back. Hebrews chapter two, beginning at verse one. Is it on the screen? Because I'm using my phone tonight. All right, come on, Stacey gonna bring that on the screen for us. Okay. Be patient, be patient. I am. All right. This last week, uh, we in, in chapter one, it went over um, talking about us uh, that Jesus is a, is a divine being. It basically shared that he's greater than angels. Uh, the angels come up beyond him. Now, we're going to continue a little bit on that today, uh, but we're going to share some other stuff that, that the text is reading uh, to us so very carefully. Okay, let's let's start. Uh, Hebrews chapter one, chapter two, beginning of verse one. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. All right, let's stop there. That's enough. Let me see if I can get to Let me see if I can get to that. We must pay careful, the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. What did we hear? It's referring to chapter one. What did we hear? <laughs> Get it wrong. What did we hear? What did we talk about in chapter one? I put it right in the introduction. Yeah. None of y'all even pick that, it up. That Jesus was superior to the angels. Yeah, Jesus was superior. To, uh, amen. <laughs> Jesus was superior to the angels. So, in in in, so we're paying careful attention, basically, to the teaching that we must hold to that thought process that Jesus is over the angels. And we can't let anything hinder that particular teaching. All right. We got to hold on to it because that teaching, if you look in the first chapter, it talks about it's teaching us about salvation, about angels, and that and about God's son. That's what it's teaching us about in the first chapter. And we must hold to that teaching because we, we gotta understand many times. What the Hebrews or the Jews wanted, they made they, the whole point was to try to make the angels greater than Jesus. And he's telling us, hold to the teaching, don't let it go. And he kind of it billboards it to say it's all about salvation. And we got to make sure we can close attention to what we have heard, because sometimes we don't pay attention to what we've heard. And the text says, so if we don't pay attention to what the word says, then we find ourselves doing what? Oh, yeah, you do. Drift. 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 That's what you do. And you know you drift. All right. So somebody read um, what we've heard. Be careful now, because I want to make sure in Isaiah, it talks about Isaiah 12 and 2 says what, Michelle? We're holding, remember, we're holding to the teaching about what Hebrews chapter one has taught us, that angels were messengers from God, that they were sent by God, but they're not greater than the Son. And the Son brought us salvation. Okay. All right, come on, Michelle. Isaiah 12 and two. Surely God, God is, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. 
The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. So, so, right. So Old Testament speaking of God becoming our salvation. Understand at this point, Jesus hasn't even come in the flesh, but it speaks of the salvation, right? We've heard that salvation in Isaiah says is on the way. He is our salvation, our savior, not the angels, but Jesus is our salvation. Oh. Amen. Comment. Disagreements. Come on, Luke 169. Says well, Luke 169. Um what the God said, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his ser servant David. He has raised up a horn. And who is that horn? Um Jesus. Jesus. That's who that horn is. He's, so it's, it's sharing with us that in the text it says we must pay careful attention, therefore, to what we've heard. And what we've heard in John and Hebrews chapter 1 is that Jesus really is our salvation. He's greater than the angels. Yet the angels are important, but they're not greater than the Savior. Come on, give me John chapter 3, verse 16 and 18. I'm trying to make my point. I'm, I'm trying to make my point. Come on. Who I gave that to? Timothy? John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. I got two Timothy. Oh, here we go. Yeah, which one, which one, Bonner? Okay, one of y'all grab it go. You got to go. <laughs> John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. All right, hold on. It's on screen. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh. There we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. One, one and only son. This is the mm -hmm. new international version. Yes, it is. Um, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because mm -hmm. they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Amen. Amen. I'm, Amen. Making, a point. I'm making a point. Nowhere do you see that the belief in angels equals to salvation it is jesus that equals to salvation therefore he is greater than the angels thank you he's greater than i'm trying to make that point one more first timothy 1 15 who i gave that to somebody y'all come on help me here he gave it but, to me okay come on chair read that to me first timothy okay. 1 15. 1 15. <clears throat> Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Amen. Everybody should say amen because we've all have sinned. Amen. And fallen short of the glory of God. We must pay careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard that Jesus offers us salvation so that. And what I want you to really get in this too is that, that the angels came as messengers for God. Jesus came as the word of God. He is greater than the angels. And when we have the word, it says, we should not drift away from the teaching. So if we know we shouldn't, why are we drifting? Oh, oh, because we're not paying attention? We're not paying attention. And, well, not only are we not paying attention, but are we really believing? Mm. See, we, 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 we hear the word. It's okay in our, in our thought process. When we fall in love, we tell the girl, or the girl tells us, it's okay for us to live together before marriage. Before marriage. 
Therefore, if you allow this, then you are doing what? That's what I was trying to say. Okay, okay. Because you know what the word says. And many mm. times we go on further than that. Sometimes we gossip. Sometimes what we say about a person is true. But the problem is we continue saying stuff. And it ends up being gossip. And the word God. tells us not to gossip. We are drifting, drifting away from what the word says. Stay mm -hmm. to the word. Don't compromise it because it fits your case. Let Ooh. me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you right now. It's oh, and we've we've decided it's okay to drink alcohol, and we use the term Jesus turn water into. Wine. Wine, wine. Water to wine. Uh, the problem is we drift. See, because some of us can't handle a half a glass. Because Ooh, Lord. it's the drunkenness. See, we drift, but we try to make the word compromise to what we feel is okay. And I'm saying mm. stop compromising the word because you want it to fit your agenda. We must pay careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. That Jesus is greater than angels. That Jesus is the word. That we do not drift. Can anybody share with me a time you know you had drift? Hmm. Not everybody at once. <laughs> or maybe you haven't drifted. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> Be careful. Because I'm telling you, the text is speaking to believers. Remember, these are the Hebrews who have converted and accepted the message. And there are those who are trying to convince them otherwise. But Paul is talking to the Hebrews, be careful. Because I've taught you, be careful that you do not drift. Verse two, read that, Diane. Any, any questions so far? Okay, come on, Diane. For since the message spoken through angels was binding and Stop every right life. There. Stop right there. Since the message was spoken through angels. Now let's be very clear here that angels were sent by who? God. They were sent by God to carry the message of the word of God to the people. The word that the angels delivered, the text is saying it is binding. So if it is binding, that means it carries with it a punishment. Are y'all there? Mm -hmm. We read it again, Diane. Start from the front. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received is just punishment. <laughs> I'm getting feedback somewhere. All right. Okay. So now listen. Listen to me. Angels represented God. They came to give the message that God gave them to the people. If you disobeyed the angels, there was a punishment because the word is binding. And if you disregarded what the angels said, there was punishment following Sodom and Gomorrah. The other issue where we could find where the angels came with a message, they did not want to listen. It is important that we pay attention to what the word of God says and follow instructions. All right? It's binding. And every violation and disobedience receive is just punishment. So if the angels had that kind of message, <laughs> What do you think Jesus is coming with? I guarantee you one thing, his message is greater than the angels. Okay, Stacey, they, they're not believing me this tonight. Let's go to Galatians chapter three, verses 19. Galatians chapter three, verse 19. I need that on the screen, please. Galatians chapter three, verse 19. You ready, Diane? 
Come on. Why right. then? <laughs> why then was the law given at all? Okay. It well, hold, add on, hold, on, hold on. You know, don't try to rush, Diane. Don't try to rush me. Don't try to rush me. You're trying to rush me. Why was the law given at all? What is the purpose of the law? So people would know <laughs> right from wrong. Okay. Give me a to reveal sin. Diane. Thank you. Who is that, Tim? Tim. Was that Tim Tim? Uh, Tim, thanks Tim to reveal sin. That's mm -hmm. what the law did. It revealed sin. So why was the law given? Read on, Diane. It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. What, the law who is the seed? Hold on, Diane. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It was added, it was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. Who is the seed? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. That is right. So understand, we got the law, but the law we knew could not hold it. It, had, it was added until the seed come, which is Jesus. Uh, the preferred one, all right, he is to come, all right? The law was given to angels and entrusted to the mediator. Y'all got to get this piece right here. Because the law was given to who? To uh, us. Transgression. Oh, me. Mm -hmm. No, the law was given through who? Oh, through the angels. Oh, oh, the angels. Yes. Thank you. And I'm, I'm trying to make the point now. The angels wrote the law, and they gave the law to who? Right, give me feedback. Who they gave me feedback? Okay, is that me? <laughs> okay, now listen, listen. The law, you gotta understand, the law was to reveal sin. The law was given to who? The people. Who gave it to the people? The angels. Who gave it to the angels? God. Okay, from God to the angels. And from the angels gave it to who? Us. I'm trying to make you think. I'm trying to make you think because there's a transition here. God gave it to the angels, and the angels gave it to the people. There's a there's a step before the people. Who spoke to the people? The prophets. Oh, the prophets of Moses. <laughs> Thank you. They had the law. So listen to the transition from God to the angels. From the angels to the Moses or to the prophet, and from the prophets to the people. But when Jesus came, all right, see, because it says the law was given to angels and entrusted to a mediator. That mediator in that text is, is talking about one of the prophets. But we know that it was not, they were not the seed. The law was there temporarily. The, the law could not save us, y'all. That's why the mediator Jesus had to come. He is our savior. That he brought us salvation. And because of that salvation, you and I have eternal life through him. Amen. Are we understanding? Are we understanding? Yes, sir. Questions, comments. Okay, let's go back. Now I had that that supported my 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 my, my process. That the angels were buying it, were buying whatever they told, told from brought from God. They, it was binding because the law was given to Moses or Abraham or, or one of the prophets, and that given it to the people. It still was binding. But when Jesus comes, it is even greater. Come on, Diane, verse two, and keep going. Waiting on you. For since the message spoken through angels was binding and every viol every violation and disobedience received is just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Thank you, Diane. 
how shall we escape? The text is really saying it is rhetorical. There is no escape. How shall we escape if we ignore? Y'all don't y'all leave that out. If we ignore such greater salvation. It's really saying if we ignore the word of God, how shall we escape the punishment? If you cannot escape the punishment of an angel, which was binding, how can you escape the punishment of God through Jesus Christ by disobeying his word? It's clear there. How shall we, if we ignore? My God, amen, I, I ignore. And I, I ask myself in my study, how many times are we ignoring God? Another word for ignore is neglect. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I'm just letting it soak a little bit. Because you know what God said, but we neglect or ignore as if God is not talking to you. Christians are the ones who neglect the word of God. We know what the word of God says. We know what he told us to do, but yet we ignore it. Mm -mm -mm. Sinners are not charged with neglect. They're charged with rejection because they reject God altogether. But as, as believers, how is it that we know what the Bible says? Love your enemies. Love those who despite and say all oh, manner of evil against you. And yet you have people in your life that you tell my you can't stand and you don't love. You are neglecting or ignoring the word of God. Am I making myself clear? Yeah. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Pastor. How hey, Pastor. shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? How can you just reject God's word? We cannot do that. How can we do that? Let me, let me throw this in there. Forsake not to assemble ourselves together. But we allow COVID, preach Reverend Bottom. Okay, I'm supposed to be teaching. Calm down. Calm down. Let me calm down for a moment. How can we neglect to assemble ourselves with one another? You don't want to be with the saints. But it, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's the word I choose to ignore. He ain't talking to me. He talking to somebody else. I ain't going out there. Let them go out there. But we need the word. Come on, I heard a question. Come on. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, Pastor, but but sometimes I, I, I'm human though. Can I make mistakes? Uh huh. You you can, but and, and you and use a lot of excuses because oh. many of, of for making mistakes. Because what we do is when you when you neglect, you're just saying I'm I'm gonna do repeat behavior. And God said, you ain't making no mistake. You're making a choice. And this is where we get, we, we choose to do things. We choose, we, it's easy. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to marry her. I am going to, Lord, my, my plan is to marry her. But we can save a whole lot of money if we shack up. If we live, if we live together. Because it, it's it's more comfortable for me. Well, I get I need to get to know him and see him. Instead of trusting God and do what God say, we we find ourselves compromising or ignoring what He say, and then we we start rewriting the Bible. Is what we really do. I I was uh, any any questions comments so far? I have a question, but it may be a little out of line. But I'm going to ask it anyway. Go ahead. Because of all this chaos and everything that's going on now, is this because basically we are so disobedient and not following God's word? Or is it happening because is prophesied in Revelation, or is it? A, I mean, that's my question. I think it's. It, I think it's a little bit of both. I think okay. that we have gone so far away from God as if we don't need Him, and and God is going to show you some things. You you really do need me because I allow chaos to come all over the place, 
and you're gonna who are you gonna call on? At some point, you're gonna call on him. I mean, I'm I'm uh, in my uh, devotional. I've been reading uh, Jeremiah, and I I'm telling you, I pray to God that we never get in this position of being so disobedient that God just all He wants to do is punish. I mean, He said, "Don't even pray to me about it. Don't even talk to me. Tell him the prophet Jeremiah. Don't even pray to me about it for these people. I am going to put something on them. I'm going to destroy their land. I'm going to I'm going to put a hurt on them." Really, what He said, because they have not. They have chosen other gods, idols before Him. And many times I think, what have we put? Have we put everything else before God? To a point where you know we we ignore him, we know what his word said, and we just say, go ahead and ignore. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and then claim I'm human as if God don't know you human. He knows you human. How shall we neglect so great a salvation? I, I looked up. Um, I hope that answers your question, Cherry. Um, I looked up uh, looking up the word neglect. The word neglect says we make light of. Uh, it, it needs to have the opportunity, but we ignore or disregard it, disregard the opportunity to knowing what the word says. But eh, I'll put that off God. I don't really, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Basically, we're not taking God very serious. And, and this is say how, but still you think you, you ought to go into heaven any, any kind of way. If we really love God, like we say we love him, because you can, you can quote um, uh, passages from the Bible, but you got to believe them. And you got to believe them in your heart. And when you believe in your heart, then you execute what you believe. Because I think a lot of times we talk, we know what the word says, but are we, are we executing it? Or are we ignoring it? All right? Okay, um, questions so far? Am I making sense? I'm yeah, well, you know, there. I got something to say. I got something to say. I mean, that's that's a kind of a hard word, ignore. Uh-huh. You know, so, you know, I know I, um, what's say um. Ignore it. Yeah. Are you doing it? Uh, no, what? Ignore. ignore. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> well, when you stand before him, what he gonna say? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I told you, I told you to do this, but you are gonna say, yeah, and say, and then you gonna start talking. You came lie, especially when the Lord has made it clear. I told you in my word to do this, but you just, I, I didn't say nothing. You just ignored me, and you okay. did what you wanted to do. All right, how should okay. I? Yeah, but then you want him to let me in, let me in, Lord, let me in, let me in, let me in. Let me in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How shall we neglect so great of salvation? Um, in my notes, I, I found this, um, I said, I found it says, when we consider something great, we will naturally pay attention to it and not neglect it. When we think it's great. If we consider something great, we leave it to convince, to, to uh, rep, we are committed to it when we think it's great. When we like the, the Golden State Warriors, we think they were a great team. And we, we would spend money more than our tithes to get to the game because we, they were great and we wanted to be there. Oh, I'm making sense. I know I am. We're all, and we thought they were great, so we would let nothing disturb them. They played on Tuesday night at 7.30, and it was Bible study. You chose a game <laughs> over the world. <laughs> Mercy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, when you, can we say, well, when I think about, like, neglecting mm -hmm. or was been, I've been told or ignoring um, for some of us, we just about neglect or ignore every day of our life. Mm -hmm. And it comes with, you know, it could be we neglect to feed someone who we know is hungry. Uh -huh. Or we neglect to show some type of compassion to someone or because we've been given compassion. 
Amen. So I just think about the things that we've been given when we neglect to give back, you know, even sometimes mm-hmm. in our in, in the forgiving or or what have you. So this is it's it's an ongoing theme. And I think one of the things that has to take place, like when you said when we hear the word, uh one of the things that has to take place is uh, in the paying attention of the word, I mean, we have to make sure we create the lifestyle because of the lifestyle, our daily we neglect. When our lifestyle is not wrapped around Christ. That's a very good statement, Tim. This is where I want us to understand that Christ expects us to get better because we're getting closer to him. In our relationship with him, he helps us to become better, that we don't we do not do the same behavior over and over because each one of us on the call, we've messed up. Just this week, I'm talking about. But as we grow we, closer to Christ, he helps us. To become better, I know, I know, I'm, I know, I'm correct about this. He helps us not to do those things that don't look like Him, because when in my mind or in my heart, in my soul, my spirit, I consider God great. I really do. I consider Him the greatest of all, and in that greatness, I want to make Him happy with how I'm living, how I'm executing, what I'm saying, and sometimes I know in my reaction. People can make you say stuff or you choose to say stuff based on how what people say. But it's the Lord who helps us to not to react to all of the bad behavior and give light because we want to be examples of the word. We know what we've heard. We know what the word says and we know the expectation because we serve a great God. He's able to help us. Hmm. We cannot neglect what the word says. I believe each one of us believe he's a great savior. He paid a great cost. All right. He saved us from a great penalty of, of death. And since we know that, we should not neglect such a great a price of salvation that he paid for us. That, that we don't just merely go through the motions, but we live a life that he's called us to live. Yes, yeah. you know, you, you mentioned about choice earlier when someone mentioned about mistakes, uh-huh. you know, yes. you yes. choose. I, 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 and that's when it comes to the lifestyle, we start not to, we start making better choices. I believe we do make mistakes because we do sin unknowingly. And I believe that's a mistake. I didn't realize what I've done, blah, 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 blah. But when you grab your coat and keys and you drive to sin town, that's not a mistake. That is something that's been planned that you decided to do, Mm -hmm. you know. And, And the thing about it is when we, if we don't, decide to create this lifestyle around Christ, what happens is the choices will continue or become greater. You know, the mistakes get better because these are things that we don't plan and mm-hmm. we're most likely to get through. But when it's, when our lifestyle is, when we're trying to build a lifestyle around Christ, what happens is we become now not only, like you said, uh, when we're in the Word and when we listen and we're sticking to what the Word says, we become more sensitive and we're able to hear the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit a lot better. Now, we don't make these choices uh, <laughs> um, that we sometimes refer to as mistakes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I was going to go back, Pastor, because I it, it added to what Tim was saying. I, I just thought about that word you were talking about, so great a salvation. And I went back to what you, in John 3, 16, 17, 18. And man, you know, just think about the greatness and 
how great it was for, sac for Christ to sacrifice his life. And when we think about that, sometimes it's hard to fathom that, you know, um, man, he sacrificed his life, forgave my sins, redeemed me back to him. That was a great task. I mean, and, and no one could ever do that. No one else could have done that but Jesus Christ. And when we think Amen. about how great that is, then that makes us, that, that makes us want to serve God even more. Yes. That's, that was a great thing. And we, and I always think about that, man, God loved me so much, you know, personally, he loved mm -hmm. me so, as I, as I am, not that yeah. I had anything, but he loved me so much that he gave his son for me. Right. Great thing. Right. Just for me, you know, then I can include everybody else. Yeah. Well, I always ask myself the question, how could he love me based on what I knew about me before mm -hmm. I came to him? How, how could he possibly love somebody like me based Amen. on what I've done prior to coming to him? Man. Yet he considered me for salvation. And I'm like, my goodness, this, wow. this garden service got to be great. Because yeah. you don't know my dirt, but I know he knows. But yet he chose me. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it. Tina? You, you know, well, Bonnie, you... You, one thing I like what you said about that. How can he, you know, so love me in the situation that I was in or the person that I was? Mm -hmm. And but we have to come to the point of honesty of 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 accepting that what, of what we was because yeah. sometimes we be in denial of some things and we wonder why certain behaviors or something continue because we haven't come into uh acceptance and when we come into acceptance of man i could man when you I realize you mm -hmm. love this you love that person you know mm -hmm. and it goes back to like what steve said and then you you want to serve him even more you yes. know and i know for me i look at i go i'm like i know one thing i i ain't got and i ain't gonna never have what it takes to pay you back <laughs> but i'm gonna do my best i can right you yeah. know mm. in in working out you know being of service to you you yes. know so but like you see when you realize the the love and i think that's the the big key word right here when you realize the love and really look at that love, not just from where he, the person he grabbed you from, but to the person that he has you now. Yes. And where he's going to take you, you it's know. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's called amazing grace. <laughs> His grace is it's amazing. It is quite amazing that he uh, love us. And I know uh, Theo has spoke on it, but I'm telling you, we, we know that we all have been forgiven uh, some stuff we've done. I'm not talking way in the past. I'm talking about, you know, recently, but yet we know we have the grace of God. Uh, I, I like the, 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 uh, the, the uh, last verse. Um, it says, God also testified. Well, let me read verse three. How shall we escape if we ignore such greatest salvation? This salvation was first announced by the Lord. I shared with that in other passages of scripture announced by God himself, who confirmed to us by those who heard him. We've heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. I want us to understand that, yes, Hebrews wrote about it, and talked about and telling them about these signs and wonderful things that, that they saw or happened. But what about us today? We are to testify uh, about the signs, the wonders, and the various miracles that God has performed in our lives. And then it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Each one of us, because of what Jesus has done, has been given gifts by the Holy Spirit. I mean, this is just, this is just read it backwards because if we got the, the Holy Spirit to distribute this according to his will, we are able to perform miracles. 
do wonders, do signs, do, and then we can testify of what God has done for us. I mean, this is just, I mean, this is amazing to me that God has extended salvation to us and really share with us what Jesus has done for us. I think uh, as we continue in this uh, next week, uh, there's some other things I'm going to uh, share with you about about God's plan. I mean, how you got to really see what God is doing in his plan. None of this catches God by surprise. He knows what he's doing. I think I had uh, one question I wanted to ask y'all tonight. Um, we use the term that Jesus is both God and man. I'm going to talk a little bit about that next week. But I just have a, a quick question I want to put on your mind. Was Jesus a man before he arrived on earth? Spirit, man. Was he a man before he arrived here on earth? He was a baby, right? Born in a manger? Before, I said before. I specifically used the term <laughs> before. Didn't I say before? Was he a man, M A N, like Eric, <laughs> M A N, like Steve, no. before he arrived on earth? No. Okay. You can think about that a little bit. Mm. Eric, oh, he bold with no, with a big no. Okay. We'll talk about that later. Don't let me forget to talk about that next week. Okay. <laughs> Where's Pastor, Diane? Pastor yes. Bonnet, it is 823. <laughs> and who is our speaker for tonight? Donovan. Okay. All right, Donovan. I'm going to share some things about Donovan after we're done. Go ahead, Donovan. <laughs> okay, so my my word uh, is trust. Uh, so what is trust? We know that it's a mental construct, a blend of thought and feeling that has a paramount importance. It's a value, it speaks to what we believe about ourselves and others, but it also has a personal meaning and is expressed through our behaviors. The you know kind of straight definition of trust is a firm belief in reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. When there is trust, it will affect every area of your life, whether personal or business. Um, when there's no trust, it affects you, it hurts you and could end up costing you. Trust usually takes years to build and only seconds to break and also forever to repair. Ooh. If you want to succeed, you will you'll need to be concerned with cultivating trust and credibility. When we think about the idea of trust, many think about how they trust people around them on earth. But as the Bible reminds us, the most important form of trust we can have is in our God. To have a relationship with God, you need to be able to trust that he will provide you and guide you on your journey through life. And this is evidence in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That's it. Thank you, Don. I like <laughs> you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. That was good. That was good. Thank you. Amen. We, um, uh, and I, I, I thought this was kind of fitting because he didn't tell me to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, Donovan, I've been praying for him and uh, I would ask you to pray for him in a point of transition. Um, he's in the mood of transi transitioning uh, from one job to another. Um, and, and we have to trust God that God will work out things for us. Yeah, all in college, Donovan had this dream of, of some point, of working at his favorite place, and um, I just, I just got to tell it because he didn't, he did not plan. Um, well, when he, when he came out of college, he thought it was gonna hire him, but they told him now he had no experience to get on. But uh, the Lord blessed Donovan about a month and a half ago. Um, he got recruited by Nike uh, to come and work for them, and. Um, he got the job, y'all. So we're just very excited about it, and we're just giving God praise 
about it. And, um, you know, he's, he, he didn't like all of them, but he's going back. He's going back because uh, they, uh, they have offered him a, a job there. So just be praying for him as he goes back that uh, what he gives to us tonight, that he'll be able to follow that, to trust the Lord with all his heart and lean out his own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct the path. So I'll be praying for him as uh, he transitions very, very soon. So uh, we just thank God. Amen. Come on. Just thank you. Can you talk about Nike? That's, that's Michael Jordan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that's King. King. That's money there. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, amen. So just follow the Lord. Amen. I, I, I try to convince him, man, and everything. Make sure you have Christ. All right. Amen. Prayer request. Any prayer requests tonight? I want to thank um, Steve uh, uh, for our uh, prayer request on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. It's been going very, very well. And uh, we've been getting just a lot of requests to, to pray. So uh, are there any prayer requests tonight? that uh, you would like to uh, mention on tonight. I know one, I want the church to be praying for Sister Jackman. Um, one of our members is having surgery on tomorrow. So y'all be lifting her up um, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that the uh, Lord will give her the faith and the courage and the doctor said he would guide their hands on, on tomorrow. Anybody else? And nobody else need prayer. Okay, put my name on the list. And <laughs> uh, it's important that you pray for me. Um, I, I was on a minister's meeting on today, and I want y'all to pray for um, Dr. Claiborne Lee. Um, he's running for um, office um, uh, president. He's trying to run for president of the, uh, oh my Lord. What is our convention, old school, Michelle? Mm -mm -mm. Na National Baptist? Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm saying. Who is that? Carolyn Bond. Thank you. <laughs> National Baptist uh, Convention. They're trying to bring it back, uh, back to uh, a place where not so much old school, but a place where they can be more helpful uh, to the churches versus uh, so self-centered around what they wanted as far as, you know, they were the organization probably of, uh, what can you give versus giving back? So um, Dr. Claiborne Lee is running for office in that, and he's asking the churches, 2024 will be the election. So he's asking people to kind of rally around him, support him as he runs for president of that organization. That, that is national. So that's every state in the union has the uh, churches that are part of that. So um, as for today, Change Your Lives is not a part of that, but we are considering it. So. So let's um, be praying for him. Anybody else? Yes, I would like prayer for um, Ralph Jr.'s, Ralph Nyland Jr.'s family, his family. I'm sorry, no, not Jr., the, the second, actually. Randy Nyland, that's his nickname, his family. Him and his family. Okay. Man, don't forget the wife, Pastor. She, uh, she is recovering from her injury. Angie, okay. Angie. Angie got a fall, uh, and she needs, her body's not healing like um, she wanted it to as fast as she wants to. So be praying for Vanjie, her body heals. Anybody else? Let's pray for one another that we continue to follow the word. This is one of the greatest weeks of our Christianity is that we are celebrating the, um, the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, on Good Friday and the resurrection of him on Sunday. Um, so we want to make sure that we tell people about this week. This is the greatest week that we, our sins were forgiven because of what Jesus did on that cross. So. Um, I had a great, uh, uh, when the kids asked me, what's a, what, what is Easter all about? Boy, I tell you, I was so happy he asked, and I tell you, and I shared with him the best way I know how to tell him what Easter is about. I said, yeah, we're going to be hunting eggs, but before we get the eggs, we got to really understand that it's about Jesus Christ. It's about the resurrection 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we make sure we give the message to the people uh, that they understand. That's what is because if there's no Christ, there is no Easter. That's a good sermon time too. Okay, all right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I really want to thank each of you for for attending the Bible study. Y'all are making it so much better. I appreciate y'all coming and uh, being a part of the Bible study. Continue to invite people to come um, that they might learn, that they might understand, ask questions. And I don't want y'all ever be afraid to ask questions, even if it's a wrong question. Let's get it so we can get it right. And I'm just here trying to make sure that we understand it is about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to be encouraged to continue to do that. All right. If nothing Wait, else. Before you, before you get started, um, just a prayer of thanksgiving that Pastor's dad turned 92 today. Um, oh, and you. he is in he is in good spirits. Um, he knows everybody's name. He's not laid up in the bed. I mean, it is it is just a miracle. Um the doctor said he has cancer. The doctor gave him six months, but he is standing on what the Lord says. And I, I'm telling you, it is he, it is just amazing to see him, as we saw him a couple of weeks ago. So I just give I just give praise um, to God. I really do. Amen. 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 Thank you, Carolyn, for sharing that. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? And knowing that uh, I see each one of these calls, uh, these people, your names on the calls, I'm telling you, it's incredible that uh, we pray for each of you. Um, I, I'm pretty sure uh, between uh, Steve and I, every every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays, we're calling your names out. We're lifting you up. We don't need to know what you're going through. God knows. And we just call your name that the Lord will just, just intercede and just do what he needs to do to help you to meet your needs according to his riches and glory. So we serve a wonderful God. That's what I love about him. He reads my minds and my thoughts process, and he's able to execute what I need. All right. If nothing else, let's pray. Let's pray. Just want to thank you tonight for your kindness. I thank you for all that you do, Lord. I thank you for your word. I know the angels came, but I'm sure glad Jesus came, that came to pay the ultimate price for our sins. We rejoice in your name. We thank you for all that you do. You, you are a great God. And we just give you praise. I lift up Vanjie and other members. I know bodies need to be healed, God. We just ask that you touch. I'm asking you touch Michelle's body, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just touch God. There's others who are going through, Lord, who bodies and Sister Jackman is going through surgery, God. I'm just touch God right now. I know you're able to do it, Lord. You can make it better but even for the arrival on the operating table. I'm just asking you, touch Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. I know you're able to do that. I just thank you for doing it even right now. I pray for Claiborne Lee tonight. I just ask that you touch his body, Lord, and touch his mind, his thought process, that whatever you do, he always considers you first in moving forward. And Lord, however you choose to work out, help us, Lord. Do whatever we do, we do it for your glory. For your honor, God, that you might be lifted up and given the highest praise. Lord, I just thank you for all that you do. I just thank you so much. Lord, I come tonight uh, praying for Randy, Nyla, Lord. I just, Lord, I just ask you to see, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that family needs you, God. I know that you can regulate minds. You can turn, Lord. You can change it, Lord. Because if the enemy attacks, God, you can go and intercede. And we can use the power of the word. We just ask you in the name of Jesus, please, God, I just I lift you up tonight. I lift you up tonight. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. I pray for Yvonne tonight. I that she touch her body, Lord. I know her leg is not feeling, but Lord, I just ask through the power of the Holy Spirit right now, God, touch Holy Spirit. I know you're able to do that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and thank you, Lord, for the healing. Thank you for what you're doing even right now. You are mighty God. You're just so strong, so powerful. Everywhere at the same place, executing your, Lord, your majesty, your glory, Lord, executing your plan. And Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord, not to ignore your word. Help us to hear it, and Lord, help us to execute what you told us to do, God, because we have those gifts given to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you help us tonight? That whatever we do, we do for your glory and your honor, God. I just thank you tonight, Lord. We just give you praise. We love you so much for all that you do. Those that are going through transitions, 
those who are trying to make decisions, God. Help them to look to you first before they step out, God. Help them to call on your name and then give them the direction, God. And Lord, when you bring them through, when you bring them over, when you bring them out, help them to take a moment to say, Lord, we thank you for all that you do. We love you so much. We honor you. We bless your name. We bless your name. I, 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 Lord, I lay my hands on Timothy Mims tonight in the name of Jesus. Bring it back like only you can. I know you can touch him right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, because we're touching and agreeing, God. And you say, well, two or three gathered in my name. You say you would be in the midst. We thank you, Lord, for the healing. We look forward, Lord, to things getting better in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer tonight. We glorify you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. And the entire church, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank y'all so much for the Bible study. Really good to see y'all. Amen. Thank y'all. Appreciate all y'all. All right. Uh, good to see you. Good, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank y'all so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.